Hi, I'm Chris. I'm pastor of Elevation Church in the city of Wyoming. And you know, when Jesus ended his earthly ministry, the last thing he said was, go and make disciples. So discipleship is something that we as pastors and church leaders take very seriously. Just look at the number of ways that we do a, a discipleship, all the different uh, approaches and programs that are available to us with varying degrees of success. I'd like to share with you a, uh, uh, something that's been fruitful in my life and in our ministry at Elevation Church. I'd like to give credit to it uh, to Jeff Vanderstelt. Uh, I heard this phrase, root to fruit, first said by him, and he articulated it really well in the book Gospel Fluency, so I'd encourage you to pick that up. What we've done is taken that and sort of um, applied it to our context at Elevation, and I think it's something that you could apply to your ministry as well. So he said, yeah, go and make disciples, but that was the end of his earthly ministry. So you look back to the beginning of when he started, and he said the words, repent and believe the gospel. So we're going to begin our discipleship with the words, repent and believe the gospel. That's where it all begins. That's where transformation happens because the righteous live by faith, faith in the truth. So here we go. I take an aspirin uh, every day in the morning. It's a preventative measure to help my heart. A lot of you work hard and exercise and um, eat right. That's good. Those are daily things that we can do to make sure that we're healthy. That's what this is. So imagine your daily devotions, uh, the time that you spend with yourself. If you were to focus on these questions in this order, it can help you produce the kind of fruit in your life that you want to see. So we begin with this big question, who is God? And this is really cool because we call this the four G's. You could take all of God's attributes, and there are many, but we boil it down to these four G's, that God is good and great and glorious and gracious. And if we remind ourselves of the truths of those things, it can affect a lot of our lives. Consider the fact that God is a good God, that he's giving us all things for our good and for his glory. Uh, we can trust that God is a great God. He spoke all things into being with just his word, so he's pretty powerful. He's gracious. We know that because we can look to Jesus on the cross. He's a gracious, merciful God. We also know that he's a glorious God because right now angels are singing his glory, declaring his glory. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. So we want to know those things. We seek all those scriptures that point to those truths to remind us of who God is in those four G's. And then we can look to see what he has done. We know the words that Jesus said on the cross, that it is finished. And so the saving work is done. He saved us from the penalty of sin that happened. And we know one day he's going to come back and save us from the very presence of sin when he wipes away every tear from every eye. But what about the 80 or so years between the time I first believe and the time that he calls me home? Uh, he's also saving us from the very power of sin in our life today. And that's what's happening when we live by faith and believe in the truth. So if I believe that he says, it is finished, then I can now ask the question, who am I in light of who God is and what he's done? Well, if God is great, that means I don't have to be God. I don't have to worry about tomorrow because he has tomorrow figured out. I can be satisfied and actually enjoy the things that God's given me, the life that he's given me, the circumstances that he's placed me in, instead of wondering, is he holding out? Does he have the good stuff for me that he's not sharing with me? No, I can trust that he's a good God, that he's giving me everything that he has for his glory and for our good. I can believe that he's gracious, that uh, my sins have been forgiven, that I will stumble and that he still is there and he loves me and he looks at me now because he's a gracious God that he sees his perfect son, Jesus, and he's well pleased in me. I can live at peace now. I can, I can live with joy. I can, I can be happy and I can love because I've first been loved. And so you begin to see the good fruit begin to be uh, present in our life. And so if you're doing this every day, the more we begin to believe the truth of the gospel, the more we're going to start to see the Spirit change our hearts and to transform our minds. And we'll see the fruit of the Spirit actively growing in our life. And that's a good thing. So we want to follow this every day and see from root to fruit, this good fruit happen in our life. We still also have these problems that pop up because, you know, uh, I'm taking the daily aspirin for preventative issues, but what happens when I get a headache? I'll take a Tylenol. Well, as we continue to live through life, we know that sin is still going to be a part of our life until Jesus comes and saves us from the presence of sin. And so what do we do when we come up with these times when we are worrying about tomorrow? 
Well, this same exercise works, but instead of root to fruit, it's fruit to root. So we start asking those same questions in a different order. When I see fear, worry, or jealousy in my life, or when somebody who's in a discipleship group with me sees those uh, bad fruits in my life, we can ask those same questions in reverse order and say, well, if, if you're worried about tomorrow, what does that say about you? Well, if I'm worried about tomorrow, that means I think I'm God. You know, Jesus says, oh, ye of little faith, you can't even add an hour to your life, yet you're worried about tomorrow. It's like if you were a God, adding an hour to your life is nothing. It's not a big deal. And you can't even do that? And now you're getting worried about tomorrow? So if I'm worried about tomorrow, I'm, I'm sinning because when you don't do what Jesus says to do, you're sinning. And he says, don't worry. And we worry. That's sin. So I can begin to ask that question, am I God or is he? Well, because I've been doing this daily preventative work of believing the truth, I can be reminded of the truth that God is great, that he is in control, that he's upholding the entire universe right now, and that he's a good God, and that he's gracious, and he's glorious. I can remember those truths and be reminded of it, and I can repent and turn from believing those lies to believing the truth of the gospel, of what he's done, and of who he is. And then it goes down to my roots, and that encourages us to want to turn from sin and turn to him more often. And we'll start to see more of that fruit in our life. I hope you find this helpful. The good news is you can change, and it'll happen from root to fruit by faith.